What's up everybody, as always, I hope you're having a fantastic day. Today we are talking about iPads, more precisely, which one you should get. And quickly, I just want to say a huge thanks for 300 subscribers, I believe we're at like 350 now. And it's really cool, I've gotten uh, the chance to meet some of you guys on Instagram, and it's been really nice. Now, back to the video. I think that there are two kinds of uh, iPad users. There are users that are looking for a secondary device, this is where I personally fall in, so more casual users, if you will. These people are looking for an entertainment device, uh, maybe to play video games, maybe read documents, read the news, stuff like that, reply to emails. Uh, for me, it is my secondary device, but it still falls into my workflow. And then you have uh, power users. People are looking for a main device, so they don't want to carry around a Mac, well, whatever laptop, and an iPad. They just want to carry around an iPad. And of course, these two different groups will need different hardware, so different iPads. So currently on Apple's website, you can buy four different uh, iPads. You have the iPad, the regular model at 329 you have the ipad mini at uh, 499 you have the ipad air at 599 and then you have the ipad pro uh, which comes in at two different sizes so you have the 11 inch at 729 and you have the 12.9 inch uh, starting at 1099 so uh, 1100 and you can spec that ipad all the way up to two thousand four hundred dollars just to give you an idea you can get a base 14 inch macbook pro for less than that at just $2,000. And that's not with any accessories, so they're not cheap devices. But by the end of this video, hopefully, you'll see you probably don't need the uh, Pro model. You'll probably be fine with other uh, less expensive models. So let's get started with the regular model. This is, of course, the cheapest model of them all at $329. It's definitely not a cheap device, especially if you look at Apple's competition. You can definitely get a cheaper iPad replacement, so tablets. Uh, at other companies. So this iPad is going to be perfect for people that are looking for a secondary device. However, not for a secondary device to take with them uh, to work. It's going to be more for entertainment. So whether you're playing games, uh, maybe you're looking at uh, I don't know, Netflix shows, YouTube, stuff like that, that device is going to be perfect for you. It's also a good device for kids because it's a bit bigger. It's not as fragile, especially if you put it in a really big, thick case. It'll be a device that they can, once again, watch movies and stuff like that, play little games, maybe even bring to school. However, the big limitation for uh, schoolwork and you know if you're looking to implement this into your uh, main workflow is that the basic model does not have uh, does not support the second gen of Apple pencils, which can just slap on the side of your iPad, which makes it super easy to carry around. The first gen you have to plug it into the uh, charging port, which makes it really annoying to use. It also does not have USB-C. It's the only model that doesn't have USB-C actually, and that's why I think. It's not the best for people that are looking to work with their iPads. And just like the next uh, iPad, the iPad mini, it does not have the M1 chip, which means you will not get access to all the features of iPadOS 16, such as using a secondary monitor. If you plug any of these two iPads into a second monitor, you'll see that it just mirrors what you see on your iPad. So you won't be able to use it as a secondary monitor. As a matter of fact, if you pick up the old iPads, uh, even the iPad Pros like I have, without the M1 chip in it, you still won't be able to use that feature. So it's definitely something to keep in mind. Now the iPad mini is pretty much the same device as the regular model. It's a bit more expensive, it has the new design. It's smaller, so it's easier to carry on. It's also a bit more powerful. However, I don't see that, I don't think that most people are gonna notice the difference, especially considering that power users are not gonna be using the iPad mini nor the regular model. If you're looking for entertainment and stuff, it is a device that makes sense. However, keep in mind that it is really small. It's about the same size as a Kindle. That's actually what I've seen most people use iPad minis for. It's as a like, better Kindle. So if you look at uh, maybe Ali Abdal on YouTube, who's a productivity YouTuber, uh, he uses an iPad mini as his uh, Kindle replacement. Kindle replacement, sorry. So he keeps it on his nightstand and when he wants to read, he uses that device because it's super easy to carry around. You can you know put it in the back pocket of a bag. If you have really big pockets, it might fit. So uh, it's easy to take it out to take notes, maybe sketch some ideas and stuff like that. It makes it a really good device for uh, those specific use cases. And as I said, there are some limitations because it does not have the M1 chip, but if that doesn't matter for you, well, it's a really good device to, like I said, carry around. Another good use case of the iPad mini is for point of sale systems. So maybe you run a small business and you would like to add, uh, I don't know, Stripe or something, and you'd like to pass transactions on a small iPad. The iPad mini makes sense for that because it's so small and easy to carry around. And then we have the iPad Air, which I think is the best uh, value out of all of the iPads. You do get the M1 chip. It supports the second generation of uh, Apple Pencils. And it is actually a better device than my older uh, iPad Pro that I paid a lot more money for. And the iPad Air, like I said, comes in at 599 
and you get pretty much all of the features that you would get out of any of the iPads, including the iPad Pro. It's just a bit less powerful, but for most people, that's not gonna matter at all. If you're a student, it's a super solid device. You just have to pair it with maybe a keyboard. You'll be able to carry it around. It'll be, uh, you know, it can even replace your computer if you want to, because it has that M1 chip, and now you do get the ability to plug it into a secondary monitor and use that monitor on its own. And because it has a bit more power, if you're someone who likes to play video games and stuff, it'll be more powerful than the mini and the regular model. So it's definitely the best all around iPad, especially for the price. Now we come into the iPad Pro, which as the name suggests is for pro users. However, uh, keep in mind that the limitations of the iPad aren't really hardware, it's more with the software. So if you consider yourself a pro user and you think you're gonna need all of the juice that the iPad Pro can give you, just take a look quickly online at all of the apps that you need to use and check if they are on iPads. I know that I personally cannot use the iPad as my main device just because the apps that I need aren't on the iPad. And also look at the reviews of those apps because they might be just shittier versions of <laughs> the real thing. A good example of this was uh, when I personally looked at getting an iPad, I looked at Illustrator, which is an app uh, to, well, we use it mainly to do logos uh, in graphic design. And they do offer an app on iPad, which I thought was really uh, interesting. However, when I downloaded the app, it was terrible. So just check around online to see reviews before you just decide to buy one as your main device. Um, however, the real reason why I think the iPad Pro is worth it for the people that it is worth it, it's mainly because of the larger display. So you have more screen real estate, which makes it a really useful device. It's also a lot more powerful. So if you do want to use it as your main device, well, of course the iPad Pro makes a lot of sense. You'll be able to plug it into your monitor, have a bigger screen, and it's really powerful with the M1 chip in it. You can have a lot of storage, it is bigger, so if you're an artist, while well, sketching on it is a really, really, really good experience. Especially if you put a paper-like uh, protector on it. They're not sponsoring this video, however, I've tried them and I really like their product. I, I actually bought a, like a rip off of that brand, like a cheaper version, and it wasn't great. However, when I tried the real deal, it is a lot better. I personally use my iPad a lot for sketching, so uh, it's a huge part of my workflow is how I like to think. I like to think by sketching out ideas instead of using the real apps, uh, yeah, real apps on my computer. So this is where the iPad comes in uh, to my workflow personally. Also to take notes during meetings and stuff, I think it's more respectful than typing on your computer. And however, I've definitely seen people run their whole setup on an iPad. If you're a more serious gamer as well, well, the iPad Pro is a lot more powerful, so it's definitely a solid, solid, solid device for gaming. Do also uh, upgrade the storage to have you know, more storage because your games can take a lot of space on your iPad. And if you pair the iPad with a uh, keyboard as well as uh, the Apple Pencil, it's a super, super solid device. You'll be able to draw on it, take notes. Uh, you'll be able to use that as your main device, carry it around with you. It's comfortable, it's not too big. It's a bit lighter than a regular Mac. It's also a really good choice if you're a gamer, you like to play games that are a bit harder to run. The iPad Pro being more powerful, will be able to do all of that. A lot more screen, you know, so a better experience overall. And I do recommend that you pick up uh, a model with a bit more storage, just because you will fit up that storage pretty fast if you're downloading big games. So overall, I think that the iPad Air is the best iPad for everybody, except if you're an artist or if you just want the bigger real estate. Uh, so that's when the iPad Pro uh, makes sense. And ever since I've gotten this iPad, it has become an essential of my workflow and also an essential of my tech uh, everyday carry. So if you wanna check out the rest of my tech essentials, check out this video that I made on the subject and I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a great day.